graphs as well. And um, so a point to note here is uh, because increasingly more and more people are actually using uh, Jupyter Notebooks, what you notice is that it's associated with different kernels. If you notice when I opened up my Jupyter Lab here, right? Uh, I think one of the things the launch I had here is the Python 3 kernel, console, all sorts of things here, right? All sorts of different things. In fact, if I'd opened Jupyter Lab, I'd probably be able to see uh, different options as well. Our focus though, because of the nature of uh, things we do is going to be the Python kernel and specifically Python 3 here. Uh, I think you can extend Jupyter Lab and you know, Jupyter Notebook to use other languages if you wish to. I have never done that myself because uh, the closest I've come is if I want to, to use Bash, for instance, I'll just use cell magix, right? So within the cell, right, where I have live code, um, what I, 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 I can do is, and I'm just going to showcase uh, an example here, I'll open a completely new not, uh, instance of Jupyter Lab here <coughs> and create, um, and create uh, and create a new notebook, right? So I'll just say uh, Python three kernel, and then I will name this to uh, <clears throat> I'll call this code uh, three C C seven forty one, and uh, I'll just call this um, uh, like Shazro two experiments or something. Very strange name, but that's okay. So what I was saying about cell magic is uh, is that uh, let's if I want to, I'm just going to reduce this. If I <clears throat> right now I'm running this in uh, here, right? Actually, I think. Well, okay. If I wanted to, if I wanted to, if I wanted to run, let's say, uh, if I wanted to check the files that are in this direct, the directory where the notebook resides, right? I can just run it so much, you can just run it like this. So it shows me that there's, there's this file here, right? What I could do, right, is I could come back here, for instance, and just say, uh, uh, two, two, two uh, and you see and slides and lecture two, I guess. <clears throat> what I could do is I could, uh, I could maybe add, uh, I could, I could, I could actually add uh, something here. Uh, to, I'll just call this uh, txt. And just uh, say random text file or something. Right? And in here, when I do the ls command, you notice that I can, so the thing is, I was just trying to showcase that within this live notebook, you can do other things, right? Like you can, you can actually run the same terminal commands that you run, right? If you're using a Linux machine or something. Uh, so you just use what, what I call magic and more on magic just now a lot of different things. I can do a PWD here and, uh, you know, I get to see the um, absolute paths, right? of uh, the directory where this notebook is located, right? I'll save that. Um, I can, you know, view the content of, uh, I'll do an LS, uh, and then right here, I'll say, I want to see, I want to see the contents of uh, this file, right? You know, and I'll just say, it's one minus N here. And I get to see that it, it only has uh, the text here, if it's seven foot one or something. But so this, if you sit here and, and pause for a little while, you immediately appreciate the real power of this, right? The fact that you don't have to leave this environment for you to do interesting things. Yeah, it depends on the type of pipeline right, that you're working with. Soon you shall see that you can connect to things like uh, MongoDB, right? So if your, your pipeline, your data mining pipeline involves you extracting data from a database, for instance, right? you can just write code and interact with that database from within this environment. Very useful things, all of them. Um, you know, if you're extracting or harvesting information from test book, perhaps uh, maybe even tweet or something, you can do that from within here. But anyway, um, so yeah, key thing is that you have all these different things there. So we'll be using the Python kernel. Uh, 